Welcome to our latest Lumina Neo tutorial where we'll be taking your digital photos and giving them the timeless aesthetic of film. I was recently walking around Seoul on a sunny afternoon with my digital camera to get some shots for this video, so we'll go through a couple to give them both unique styles. So in this video we'll be working towards the colour tones, the textures and grain that all make up a great film photo. There are some tools inside of Luminar Neo that can make all of this possible, plus an essential tool that I really enjoy. So let's take a look. So this is the photo that we're working with right here. Pretty, you know, subject matter wise, it's pretty good, I think, for a film photography show. It's got that timeless look about it. I'm just going to work on the contrast first and ensure that the highlighted areas, especially the top of this wall just here, aren't too bright. That's looking good. And then I'm going to instantly apply some film grain before I do any color grading or anything like that because I want to get the vibe and the aesthetic of a film shot instantly. I'm just going to apply an amount of around 20 to 25. I think any more than that becomes a bit too much, personally for me. You can get intricate, however, though, with the size of the grain and the roughness. So if you really wanted to, to jump in and fine tune the grain of your image, you can do so. There are tools available to you. I'm also going to apply some vignetting as this can be a feature of film photography and that will just darken the corners of my image and now I'm starting to think actually that the sky is, is losing some of its color some of its saturation so instead of me just boosting blue saturation which would affect the image globally I can actually go into the enhance tool and then go to sky enhancer and that's only going to affect the sky. If I put that all the way up, you can see no other part of my image is being affected. Really powerful tool, very effective and saves you a lot of time. I'm going to apply around about 50. I think that's a good amount there. And then I think we can start working on the color grade. So I'm going to actually work on the color grade in several ways through both of these images. The first way I'm going to do is use the tone curve tool. And I'm going to just boost up the greens in the mids of this image, like so. Yeah, I think that's looking pretty good at that stage. I think we're starting to really get somewhere now. Let's now apply the matte tool. And this is gonna help us give the printed effect of a film photo because what we want to do is reduce some of the vibrancy which digital photos have, as opposed to film cameras are a little bit more muted, a little bit more subdued and we can bring down the vividness. Also here at this point, you can actually go ahead and apply a color grade instantly. So you could forget about the tone curve and also just apply a color grade with the matte tool. But I'm happy with where mine's at at this point. And then I'm going to apply the glow tool. Now this is the essential tool I was talking about. Obviously matte and film, those are crucial tools, but the glow effect is gonna help us achieve film bloom. And that's when you start to get a glow around your light sources. So adding the glow effect is really gonna help simulate and emulate the film aesthetic. I'm going to apply just a, around about 20 again. You can also get into the advanced settings here and actually affect the warmth of the glow, which I'm going to do. So I'm going to push it to more warmer colors. And you can also then fine tune it. If it's too bright, you can bring that down too and also adjust the softness. So it's a really good tool and one that I would definitely suggest you experiment with when you're trying to do a film aesthetic edit. All right, and I think that's about where it needs to be. I'm just gonna go into Color Harmony. Here I could fine tune the colors of my shadows, mids and highlights, but really I don't think I need to do too much. It's already looking good. But I mean, the best thing about doing a film photography edit is you can just go ahead and experiment with all these different color grades. That's why it's so fun to do. So I'm just going to affect it only a, only a slight bit, really doesn't need too much. I'll show you a before and after as well of this tool. Maybe some way around there. So yeah, there's a before and after. And again, it's both to me look like film photos with slightly different color grades. All right, there we go. Let's have a look at before and after overall of the shot. And you can see that's a drastic difference. Awesome, all right, I think we're ready then to move on to the second shot. So this is the next image that we're working with here. What I'm going to do is show you a few different methods that you can use to apply a film aesthetic. Obviously the first thing we need to do with this edit is to make sure the image is visible. Let's boost up those shadows like so, that's looking good. 
And then we're going to apply film grain with the film grain tool. There really is no substitute for this. It is the only tool that does the job. But we can use a different tool to apply a matted effect. I can go back into develop and I can create an S curve. And that means boosting the highlights and bringing down those shadows. And that's going to create some contrast and give us the matted effect. Obviously, we don't get all of the other tools such as reducing vi vividness and all of the different color ranges that you can use. But again, this is just another way that we can apply it. And I think already that this image is starting to take shape. Going to go down to the glow tool now as well. This really is the best tool for the job. And there you can see that the wall is starting to get quite bright. Because because it's coming a little bit too distracting, I can bring down the brightness of the glow. And let's look at a before and after with this tool. There we go. That's made a drastic difference. That's looking great. So a different way to apply a color grade to your shot as well is we use this toning tool just here and that will only apply color grading to the shadows or the highlighted areas. Now with this shot, it's already looking good to me, but we can apply obviously a different color grade. I'm going to create some warmer tones in the shadowed areas, which will include this door and then we'll see how they affect, that affects the highlights. So let's jump in and add warmth there to the shadows by putting the hue around a warmer tone. So I've chosen orange and then I'm just boosting that saturation a touch, not too drastically. Let's look at before and after. You can see that really has brought out some warmth in the door. And then let's look at the highlights as well. Let's see which color grade looks good. So oh, somewhere around there. Yeah, I'm going to keep it there on the lighter green tones and an overall before and after. Yeah, that's looking great. So the key takeaways are that we need to pay special attention to the texture of our image as well as the color grading to achieve an overall film aesthetic. We also need to include more muted tones as those are typically found more in film photography as opposed to the vibrancy of digital. If you've made any film edits recently and you want to share those with us, you can do so using the hashtag madewithluminar and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.